following their first defeat on home soil to the Allies at the Battle of the Bidassoa, Marshal Soult withdrew his French forces to the high ground in front of the river Nivelle, where he took advantage of the naturally strong defensive positions and built a series of redoubts. Running from the coast on the Bay of Biscay in the west along a 20 mile front to the east. However, with only 60,000 men at his disposal, Salt's men were spread dangerously thin, which meant that he had no reserve. And after experiencing a series of defeats at the hands of the Allies, the morale amongst the French troops was very low. Meanwhile, Wellington, after his victory at the Battle of the Bidassoa, was reluctant to pursue Salt further into France. While the Spanish city of Pavlona, which was close to his lines of communication with Spain, was still in French hands. With the onset of winter, Wellington also needed to move his forces away from the severe weather conditions in the mountains on to lower ground. However, with Salt unable to help relieve the city, Pavlona surrendered to the Allies on the 30th of October, leaving Wellington free to continue his invasion of France. Salt believed that Wellington would attack him along the whole of his defensive line. Accordingly, he deployed Relier's corps on his right wing on the coast, while his centre was held by Cassell's corps, with Derlon's corps deployed on the high ground to the east. Wellington planned to deploy his forces of around 80,000 men along the length of Salt's defensive line. With his main attack coming in the centre, with any breakthrough there or on the French left wing, enabling the Allies to cut off the French right wing, Wellington deployed the 1st and 5th Divisions under the command of Sir John Hope, together with Freyer's Spanish Division on the Allied left wing close to the coast while the bulk of the Allied forces, namely the 3rd, 4th, 7th and Light Divisions under the command of General William Beresford, would conduct the main attack against the French centre, with support from Giron's Spanish Division. While on the Allied right wing, the 2nd and 6th Divisions, together with Murillo's Spaniards and Hamilton's Portuguese, would attack the French left wing. Wellington had planned to attack the French on the 8th of November. However, this had to be postponed due to poor weather. As the weather improved, along with the increased movement of Allied artillery, Salt realised that he was about to be attacked. The Allied attack finally began at around 6am on the 10th of November. With a diversionary attack by Hope's division with artillery support on the coast. The Allied 5th Division attacked the French deployed around the village of Arunia and succeeded in pushing them back. While Frerier's Spanish Division pushed Villate's division back across the river Nevelle towards the village of Ceres. Salt, who was positioned on his right wing, believed this was Wellington's main point of attack. Meanwhile in the centre, the Allied Light Division advanced to seize La Grande Rune, the 3,000 foot high mountain which was the key to the French defensive line on which the French had constructed several defensive positions. The Allies advanced into the ravine in front of La Petit Rune, where they waited for the order to attack. Once the order was given, the boldness of the attack caught the French by complete surprise, causing them to withdraw. Meanwhile, 
the remainder of the Allied Light Division advance to seize La La Petite Rue and the redoubt on the Maurice Plateau, where once again the French were completely surprised and as a result were driven from these positions towards the Nouvelle in complete disorder. After a short period to regroup, the main Allied attack began, advancing across a five-mile front. The overwhelming Allied numbers forced the French out of the saint Barbe, the saint and the Granada redoubts, forcing their defenders back to the Nouvelle River. The Allies continued their advance towards the village of Serre, where Allied skirmishers drove the French defenders out. This forced Casal to redeploy his forces in the French centre. Into the area between the Louis XVI and the Signal Redoubts. At around 10 a.m., the Allies continued their advance on the French centre. And after a vigorous defence, and fearing they would be cut off and outflanked, the French commander defending the Signal Redoubt surrendered. Meanwhile, further to the east, the Allies advanced towards the bridge at Hamont, where the French put up a determined defence until their commander was seriously wounded, which resulted in them withdrawing across the Nouvelle, leaving the French troops defending the Louis XVI Redoubt unsupported. The Allies then attacked the Louis XVI Redoubt which forced its defenders to conduct a fighting retreat across the river. Meanwhile, on the French left wing, Durland's corps managed to hold a defensive line from the bridge at Amots along the ridge of the mountains running eastwards to the village of Ainhoa. As the Allies advanced towards Durland's position, they were slowed by a heavy French bombardment. Meanwhile, the Allies began crossing over the bridge at Amots, threatening Delon's right flank. At around 1pm, the Allies launched their attack on Delon's defensive line, suffering heavy casualties before driving the French out of their positions. Delon then began to withdraw his right wing towards the village of Habesen border leaving his left wing unsupported. Durlong's isolated left wing put up a determined resistance, defending the redoubt on the far left of the French line. However, when witnessing Durlong's withdrawal, they began to withdraw towards the village of Espelette. The Allies continued their advance. Wellington, believing it was too late in the day, to achieve anything of further significance, called a halt to the Allied advance as he reached St. P. As the French army continued their general retreat deeper into France. French casualties at the Battle of the Neville were around 4,300, with around 2,700 of these suffered by Cassell's Corps while the Allies suffered around 2,700 casualties, with the British Light Division suffering particularly heavily. Although this victory had firmly established the Allied forces in France, Wellington was disappointed with the battle's outcome, as he believed his army should have been more aggressive, enabling them to cut off the French retreat.